Hi, this is Ted. Uh, there's a lot I can say about why I started getting into this whole thing of prophets and, and faith healing and stuff. But really, it all starts out because I had this experience, two experiences in fact, dealing with major faith healers, being on the stage with Catherine Kuhlman. My friends and I were in a car accident and we looked like <laughs> broken legs and crutches and, and splints and the whole works. On stage, Catherine said we were healed. And my friend came to me the next day and said, I don't know what that's all about, but I don't feel healed. Nothing's changed. But we were the center of attention that day. I mean, three young guys getting healed in front of thousands of people. Uh, a year or two later, I was at a Bible college, and Dr. Yangi Cho came to our Bible college and talked to us. And after his talk, he said that there were people getting healed. And he did the typical, so-and-so is getting healed, so-and-so is getting healed, this and this, so-and-so is getting healed of this and that. And all of a sudden he said, now somebody's getting healed from sinuses. And I said, oh, I didn't welcome it. I didn't welcome it because I had already dealt too much with this Catherine Kuma thing and just kind of threw it up in the air eventually saying, I really don't know what happened and what didn't happen. And I just didn't want to deal with it anymore. Uh, even so, for the next hour, my sinuses totally cleared up. My friends were all excited that I was healed. My sinuses were healed. <laughs> One hour later, sinuses were no longer healed. I talked to Dr. Yangi Cho while reporters were surrounding him because it's the only way I could get to him. And I said, I don't know what happened, but I lost my healing. It just disappeared. Now, at that point, I'll, I'll tell you more about that another day, probably later this week, because I'm going to be talking about some of his teaching, and I'll introduce more of that uh, to you, what he said. All right, the next years, I threw that in what I call the I don't know box. I don't know what happened. I had no conclusion about anything. Did I get healed or not? What happened? Why did I lose it? All that kind of stuff. One day, not too long ago, probably about eight years ago or so, I decided I've had enough with this I don't know box in the area of healing. I want to know. And even if it comes down to faith healing, I lost it because I didn't have enough faith. I want to know about it. I want to know, is that scriptural? Is that what the Bible really tells people? Because all I knew in the area of faith, and I, I'm very good at scripture even then, I'm memorizing, back in the 70s I was memorizing, my goal was to memorize the entire New Testament. And I was already memorizing several chapters of the Bible and constantly reading, constantly digging in, constantly studying. So uh, even then I was already getting to know the Word of God pretty good, but I still struggled with, is that what the Bible really says? Does Jesus really talk? Because you can't get past those verses. By faith, by faith, Jesus commends people for their faith when they're getting healed. And he says, if you believe all things are possible in the context of healing, and he rebuked people for not having enough faith. And so finally, I just said, I, I have to deal with this, even if I'm wrong. I will. If that's what the scriptures say, I will accept it. So I began studying every one of Jesus' miracles. I put each one down in Excel spreadsheet. And I began looking for patterns. Who had faith? Who didn't? When? Why? Where? I, everything I could think of. And something began to surface that I found very interesting. And where I found my answer was, there were, I believe, four different groups. As I tell you about the groups, I will confirm that whether it's four. All right, first of all, you have the healer, and that's Jesus. 
Secondly, you have the people bringing the sick, bringing the diseased to Jesus. Next, you have the person who is sick or diseased. Finally, you have the disciples. And you do have a fifth, the groups following, or the groups, the churches, the, the synagogues he's in, the areas he's preaching to. All right, so I, I divided between those five different categories. And I looked at every one of them. And the one thing I noticed, nobody was ever told they did not have faith. And by the way, I did another spreadsheet with not enough faith, lack of faith, no faith, that as well. Studying every time that was mentioned. Studying every time faith is mentioned throughout the whole Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John. So I, I was being thorough as possible. And with those five different groups, I noticed something. Jesus was the healer. The apostles were healers in training. Then you have those other three groups. People bringing the sick to Jesus. The sick and the groups. Who lacked faith? Well, first of all, Jesus never told those who were sick and those who brought the people to Jesus. Neither one of those were ever rebuked for lacking faith. Neither were they ever denied healing because of a lack of faith or for any other reason. Those two groups never, ever were left, left out of Jesus' miracle. The only thing Jesus mentioned to them is occasionally he would say, your faith saved you, go in peace. Your faith, they, they were commended for faith, never rebuked, not that group. So that leaves us with two other groups, the disciples and the groups. Who had lack of faith? It was always one of those two. The one group hated Jesus. They weren't seeking for miracles. One seeking for miracles were never rebuked and always had enough faith, always, based only on the fact that they said, heal us, heal me. Coming to Jesus was all the faith they needed. Occasionally Jesus said, do you think I can do this? Yes. Be it done according to your faith. It was those people who hated Jesus, who lacked faith, and he could do very little among them. But there's one other group left, the disciples. They lacked faith from time to time. These are the, healer, the healers in training. In other words, Jesus expected them to have the faith, the, to, be able to, to be able to heal people. There's one story that's mentioned in all three Gospels. It's a man who brings his child to Jesus. Well, first of all, before I get into this, I need to explain a little bit of his history. He had already been to the disciples, and the disciples could not heal his kid. It was a, a demon possession. And Jesus asks him, do you believe I can do this? He says, I do believe, but help my unbelief. Now, grammatically speaking, as this sits within the books of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, there's a reason it sits exactly where it is, but I'll get into that another time. You might be able to find that in past videos of mine. But there's a reason grammatically that it is placed where it is near where the disciples believe, but struggle with their unbelief. Believing Jesus and recognizing him as the Messiah, but we're trying to rebuke him when he talks about suffering, going to a cross. So this man says, I believe, help my unbelief. He's already struggling with faith. Why? Because he's already been to the disciples and they failed him. So he's struggling with his faith. And Jesus heals him. He heals the kid. And afterwards, the 
disciples turned to Jesus and said, why couldn't we? And that's when he said, because of your unbelief. He didn't rebuke the Father for his lack of belief, even though he struggled with it. In fact, the Father's struggle was still good enough to find the healing he wanted. So after all that, what do you think I concluded? What do you conclude? This is Ted. Have a good day.